Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Steph for Runner Production House here in Singapore doing photography, videography, live streams, and basically everything tech. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm presenting to you the OC Goldstream Deck, which I would say is an all-in-one HDMI switcher that is more than capable of running your live streams. For myself, I have many years of experience with live streaming and using many HDMI switches from the ATEMs to the YOLO lives and more, as you probably have seen on my YouTube channel, the other videos. If you have not, do check them out, please. For work, I do live streams for weddings, churches, as well as for corporate clients handling their town halls, overseas interviews, and more. So I would say I do have a pretty good knowledge and real life experience of handling this live streaming equipment. So why am I doing this review on the OC GoStream deck today? First of all, I would like to say that this unit has been sent over from the OC team to do a non-biased, totally my opinion based review. So I'm in no way obligated to just say good things about the unit, but just an honest review based on my own opinion. Well, the OC GoStream Deck was released in late 2023, which seems to be a bit late to the live stream game compared to industry standards like the ATM Minis. But being late actually might not be such a bad thing because back then, mostly during the COVID period, if most of you remember, Live streams were so popular that Blackmagic Design, which was the company that created the ATEMs, were trying to keep up with the increasing consumer demand and constant feedback that they released one version after another in a matter of months. So to keep up with the newer technology, if you remember, you just have to keep buying whatever they introduced to the market and at the end of it, you probably have three to four versions of the ATEM Mini, just like me. And the earlier versions are just sitting in the storeroom as wasted space. Well, you can't sell them for much money now because the technology has already improved. So OC being somewhat new to the game has probably reviewed all the existing HDMI switches in the market and came up with the so-called best version, meaning it incorporated all the existing good features from other brands HDMI switches that are essential to a live stream and put them in one small package which is about the size of the initial A10 Mini. But today's video is not about comparison with other switches, so we'll leave them for another day. Today's video is actually a part one of a two-part series where I will give a full rundown on the buttons and the operations on the physical console itself, and of course sharing my real-life usage based on my own experience. So with all that said, without further ado, Let's dive right in. So basically right in front of me is the OC GoStream deck. I'll first talk about the ports on the back of the console. First of course, you have the power which you can connect the cable to power up the device. On the left, you have the Ethernet or LAN port where you can connect your LAN cable. Then you have two USB-C ports. So either you can connect your webcam here for an additional camera input or you can attach your SSD hard disk to record your live stream. The other use for the USB-C port is to connect to your computer to use it purely as a switcher. What does this mean? Okay, as we know the OC GoStream Deck has a built-in hardware encoder to stream directly to platforms like YouTube and Facebook, right? But if you are using video conferencing apps like Google Meet or Microsoft Teams, which is streaming directly from your computer, you can also use the GoStream Deck as a switcher to mix the camera inputs, microphones, etc. to make your boring Google Meet look more professional. You can do this simply by connecting your GoStream Deck to your computer via this USB-C port. And inside of your Google Meet or Teams app, select the GoStream Deck as an option. We'll cover this in the future. Let's move on. Then you have the six HDMI ports for you to connect the sources via HDMI. You can see the first two here is labeled Out1 and Out2, which means that you can connect a display device to monitor your switching operations, 
which is usually in a multi-view mode that looks like this. Now, the reason here why they have two HDMI outs here is also very in accordance with real-life scenarios, where one port is obviously for your own monitoring, and the other port is often used for your client's needs, example, to project to a large screen, which is very common. Or they could also link it up to their own displays so they can monitor the live stream as well. On the left are four HDMI in inputs where you can connect your cameras, your computer, your webcams, anything that you want to use as a source for your live streams. The two 3.5mm aux or mic ports here are labeled as mic 1 and mic 2. Here is where you connect your audio inputs into, for example, an output from an amplifier, a mic, an AV console, or even an MP3 player just playing music, where you can use as background music. For my live streams, I usually connect mic 1 to the AV console where I can hear all the speaker sounds from, as in the person who is speaking, either the MC or the guest, and mic 2 to a spare handphone and I play soft background music. The last 3.5mm port here is the phone port where you connect your headphones to monitor the sound and music. So that's it for the back of the console. Now moving to the top part where the main operation buttons are. On the top left here is the most important, which is the power button, where you can press once to power up the console. Here is where I want to command OC. You actually need to press and hold for about 3 seconds to power down. This means you won't accidentally power off during your all-important live streams, which may happen. The section here is the audio section, so pressing any of these buttons here will activate the audio component from the respective sources. We have the mic 1 and mic 2 buttons which I explained earlier, and they are linked to the two connections on the back of the console, mic 1 and mic 2. So pressing the buttons here activates the audio coming in through that particular input. In 1, 2, 3 and 4, which refers to the audio input from that particular HDMI source. Aux here will be audio from your memory card. PGM refers to program and selecting this would mean you are taking audio from the program source. AFV here is audio follows video, which means that whatever video you are playing to the program mode, the console will use that audio. And lastly, you have the volume knob which controls all the volume from the buttons that I've mentioned earlier in this section, the macro section. Now, for those who know what, a, what macros are on a switcher, that's great. For those who do not know what macros are, basically it's sort of like a programmable memory action where it allows you to execute a series of actions just by pressing a button. So you have eight programmable memory buttons here. All you have to do is press and hold for about 3 seconds and the memory button will blink and you can execute your commands and register to that particular memory and once you are done, press the button again to save and store that particular set of actions. Then of course we have the record section where you can record the program feed to your SSD hard disk which is attached to one of your USB-C ports. The play section here allows you to play pause, forward, and backwards on your recording. Below the record section is the next transition section where you have your key and DSK, which is your downstream key. And that basically is, uh, allows you to do an overlay, a transparent layer over your main feed. So usually I use this to place my logo or any lower thirds to be flashed during the live stream. So the thing I find on the GoStream Deck is something I've never really seen in other consoles. So when you press the key or DSK button, it doesn't really go on to the program mode immediately, but it's actually a preview. Only when you press the on-air button on top of each button respectively, that particular key or downstream key will go live. I find this a pretty good feature because you can actually preview that particular key or that overlay on your downstream key first before you press it just in case it's not the one that you want to use for your program. Now here we are at the main operations buttons. PGM stands for program and whatever you press here immediately goes to program mode which is live. 
PVW preview, which means that whatever you press here is previewing your feed. Aux here is referring to media from your SD card and SSRC is super source. So basically super source is like a split screen with one input on the left and one on the right with the ability to customize your background. Still 1 and Still 2 refers to still images that you can store inside the switcher to be displayed immediately. Now in real life scenarios, it's very useful for holding screens. So basically, before every live stream, run through the program in your head and take note of the two most important still images that will be played during your live stream. So for example, in my experience for weddings, church ceremonies and corporate clients, I would say almost 80 to 90% of the time, the two most important images will be the start or end screen and a holding screen. So a start or end screen, which is usually the same, is the image you will place at the start of the live stream when the audiences come in. Usually this includes an image of the live stream. So let's say, for example, it's a wedding. It will be a picture of the wedding couple or for a corporate live stream, an image of the event itself with details of the live stream. The next still image that ranks as important would be a holding screen. So for example, uh, we will be right back screen. This is especially useful if there's a break during the live stream where you take a break from streaming, where the on-site people go for a short tea break or coffee break. Then you can put up this still image for the online audience to know there's a short break and the live stream will resume shortly in maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And a very important image for a specific scenario. I've always thought that in my live stream videos or students that the most important thing to know for a live stream is anything can happen. So for example, the camera goes down, the mic is not working, there are sudden bursts in noise or something like that. I mean, accidents do happen. So using this still image as a curtain to cover up your live stream while you quickly fix on the problem. The section here is basically the transition style, mix, dip and wipe and is pretty self-explanatory. The PREV button here means preview. So basically, if you're not sure what these transitions are going to do, press the preview button, which will be highlighted in red. Press the transition that you want to preview or test. Then you can press auto and you can see the transition in the preview screen on your multi view. This I feel is a great move by OC because when you are using the preview mode, you can actually peek at the transition without affecting the main program view. However, in real life, for me, once I have set my transitions from the start, I probably, I always stay with the same transition throughout the whole stream. It's unlikely that you will change it midway during the live stream. For me, I use the mix effect for my live stream transitions as it looks the most natural and I've never bothered with changing it after. The last section here is cut, auto and FTB. If, you've, if you have used any switches before, these are the three standard buttons you will always see in almost every switcher. So cut basically means a hard change from your previous source to your program source without any transition effects or you are changing from one source to another, it's a hard cut. And the auto button does the same, changing sources but with a transition effect. FTB here means fade to black, well not the song by Metallica. But it basically means the screen goes to black. The purpose of this is usually for you to close your live stream at the end or using it as a holding screen like the one I previously mentioned about still image 2. However, in real life, I don't use the FTB button at all and I've actually disabled it for other switches that I own. Now, for an awesome feature of this OC GoStream deck is this SD card slot at the bottom corner of the console. Here you can input media into an SD card and insert it into this slot here. Then you'll be able to run videos or music directly from the SD card during your live streams, which is a fantastic option because in comparison with say the ATEM Mini, you actually have to connect a laptop as a video source to one of your HDMI inputs, taking up one of the ports and then using that source to play video. Here on the GoStream Deck, you can play your media files directly onto your live stream. 
The last feature that I love most about the OC Go Stream Deck is, well, this is purely a personal opinion, is the inclusion of this fader bar or T bar on the rightmost side. So this fader bar has only one use for it. It does exactly what its name, it fades. So basically, it's like the auto button I mentioned previously where you change from one source to another using a mix transition. But you do it manually instead of pressing that button. And the operation looks something like this. So I've basically run through almost all the buttons and operations on the console. So if you are still here with me, thank you so much. So the last button which I haven't talked about is the menu button here, which I will save for another video because this will take a pretty long time as I will go into detail on the exact operations of the menu buttons. If you like today's video and my style of explanation, don't forget to check that video out. So there you have it. I hope this video has given you a detailed explanation and a clear idea of how to operate the OC Go Stream Deck and how I use them in my live streams. If any of these tips resonate, do give this video a thumbs up and share them with your fellow live streamers who might find this Go Stream Deck useful. So my final thoughts on the Go Stream Deck. I see this as a pretty complete HDMI switcher for anyone who wants to do live streams. It has the physical buttons and controls of the A10 Mini, as well as the SD card compatibility of the Euro Live consoles. If I'm starting out as a live streamer who does not own any switcher, I will definitely be getting this Go Stream Deck as it has almost all the functions that I need to smoothly run a live stream. If you already own existing live stream switches, you might also want to consider getting this all-in-one switcher too. Alright, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, do drop them in the comments below. Until the next video, I'm Steph. Take care and bye-bye.